Hello everybody, welcome. My name's Richard. I'm, aren't I lucky? I get to choose a new car. Ionic 5N or Tesla Model 3 Performance, both new to this country. The Ionic 5N is just about coming out now. Some people are getting their new cars and the Model 3 Performances have just arrived at the docks in Southampton. And as people who watch our channel know, I do have a reservation on one of those, but I've been really tempted to switch to the Hyundai because there's some reviews coming out of that and it's great. But the reviews of the new Tesla are great. Now, I've had just about every Tesla model in the past. I think every Tesla model in the past, actually. I don't think, apart from the original Roadster, I think I've owned every single one. So yes, a bit of a Tesla fan, but I've had them all now, you know, so how much better is this new one gonna be? But this video really is about choosing which car out of those two I should buy with my own money. Now, at the end of the video, you'll see what the decision is. I'll explain why. But if you're a viewer in the US, I particularly want your opinion as well because the pricing here is really quite different to the US. So in a lot of markets, and it's one of my contentious points, I guess, but this is one of the factors, but in a lot of markets, there's a big price difference between the Tesla Model 3 performance, which for the performance, not to see under three seconds, does seem pretty good value really, doesn't it? Especially in the States, it's a lot cheaper there. So the pricing here, Tesla Model 3 Performance, £60,000, which is equivalent to about $76,400. US It's a bit more expensive, I told you. The Hyundai Ionic 5N here, £65,000, which is equivalent to about $82,800. So I think the gap is a lot closer here in the prices compared to other markets and around the world. So that's one factor. And I'll get onto the pros and cons of you know, software and stuff like that in a minute. The other factor is that in the US, you get 510 horsepower, 82 kilowatt hour battery. Here, we get gonna, or we'll be getting the 79 kilowatt hour battery. Our cars are made at the Shanghai factory and apparently we're gonna be getting the 79 kilowatt hour battery, same as we've had in Model 3 long range, that Model Y long range. And the output of that battery is limited. So our cars are 460 horsepower. However, the website still says 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds. That's the same. But will it really? This is one thing I'd be intrigued to know. And I think originally the pricing was meant to be a bit cheaper here as well. Some of the early press videos implied the pricing would be a bit cheaper. So maybe they've just upped the pricing a little bit. So those things have really been bugging me. And I guess no one knows until we get one and we do some draggy times and stuff like that, is the performance actually going to be different compared to the US spec ones? The US cars have got more power and they're a lot cheaper. Now we really being kind of, you know, undersold over here, potentially. And then you've got the Ionic 5N and there's now videos and reviews of that on Nürburgring and, and obviously the original press videos and track and it's an absolute beast of a thing. I've sat in one, uh, one of the shows in the UK and it is, you know, it looks completely different to the normal Ionic 5. It is a beast, it's got proper seats, it's got some real pros to that car. And then I think the Tesla has some pros and cons to it as well. So let's put, that pricing difference, because that's obviously a massive factor, potentially performance difference to one side, and just go through what I think are some of the pros and cons of each car. So I've been making some notes over the last couple of days. So, right, um, obviously, the, the say price and performance aside, the Tesla is a bit cheaper, 5,000 pounds cheaper. That's good, lovely, thank you very much. Um, but not as cheap, much cheaper as it is in other countries. So again, different influencing factors. I would expect the Tesla, as they usually are, to be more efficient. So better efficiency. Now, bear in mind that my car will be used for quite a high mileage. I typically do quite a lot of miles. I travel around a lot. So this isn't just a, a car I use at the weekend and a bit of fun. I've also got to put it to practical business use, and I do quite a lot of mileage in it. My 2024 Long Range Highland that I had, um, I did 6,000 miles in six weeks, so I do a fair few miles. So that is a factor in all this. And I do expect the Tesla is gonna be more efficient. It's actually got a slightly smaller battery than the Hyundai, but usually Tesla are really efficient and it goes further. So that's what I would expect, and therefore probably better range out of that smaller battery. Another factor, given the mileage I do, is the charging network. The Tesla supercharging network is great, and it's very easy. Actually, the rest of the charging network in the UK isn't too bad, but it just isn't as easy as a Tesla, where there's usually many more stores, simple payment methods, just it is easier. Plus, a big factor in this is that, because kindly viewers have used my referral code in the past, and customers and people have helped buy Teslas, 
Um, it has given me some uh, credit points, which has now stopped the scheme, but we'll, there will be a referral code below, but there, there is no sort of benefits at the moment. But from that in the past, I have earned some supercharging credit, so I get some free charging. And in fact, I just had an email yesterday from Tesla saying, because I can take delivery before the end of this month, they'll give me 15,000 miles of free supercharging as well. So public charging, Tesla supercharging will be free. That's obviously quite an incentive as well, given the mileage I do. I think we're going to see what the performance exactly comes out like. The real world performance of the new Model 3 does look faster than the previous one, and they claim it is. And actually, we're seeing things like you know, the tests in the UK on the US cars now, people doing uh, drag runs and draggy runs does seem to be faster. This is what will be interesting with the UK car because we only have that different battery and different output. Will it be as quick as the US ones? I'm really interested to know that. If it isn't, I won't be very happy. Um, maybe it doesn't make a difference to the 0 to 60 at least. So we'll see. I'm not sure how that's going to work. Um, with the test as well, there's no kind of uh, 12,000 miles every year service routine. There isn't really a set service routine, so that can save on maintenance. Like most other manufacturers still say, well, every X number of miles or years are still a service to do, and we need to change the brake fluid, and you kind of have to go through with that, um, which is a bit of a painful thing. Tesla don't do that, so that's great. So other than kind of looking off your tires and such like, that's good. With the Tesla, great software. Now, I've had Hyundai Ionic 5s in the past. I know the Ionic 5N now runs the latest software system, so there'll be some things improved. But whilst that car uh, mechanically looks great, the software in the Hyundai has always bugged me. It always seemed a really out of date, clumsy, difficult menu system, just not intuitive. And the Tesla software is just fantastic and lovely and easy to use with nice graphics, nice display, nice and responsive much easier, great navigation, everything in the software of the test has been great. The Hyundai would have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, now wireless, because it had to be wired before. So there are some improvements in the Hyundai software, but I just know the menu system and everything just won't be as nice to use as the Tesla. The other thing that's interesting is the Tesla now does have matrix headlights and apparently a cornering function is coming through. It's good to see the performance now has adaptive damping, which is really key. So again, I can enjoy the ride comfort, hopefully, on a long journey, but then I can go and do a track day. And I do like the old track day and it can be exactly what it wants to be on track. It was interesting with the last Model 3 performance to date. Great car, but firm on the road, you know, so if you do a long day in the car, the ride comfort is pretty harsh. But then actually when we took it to track, and we've done a video before comparing the Taycan to the Model 3 Performance on track, and we've got a track called Thruxton, there's some really fast corners on that, so you really picks apart the suspension on the car. And where the current Model 3 was quite hard on the road, it would then kind of fall a bit to jelly on the track and wasn't brilliant. And I know there's lots of aftermarket springs and dampers available, but it kind of didn't really strike the right balance between the two. Uh, in fact, it missed both points, in my opinion, whereas a Porsche Taycan, super comfortable on the road and then very capable on track. And that was a real key difference there with the Taycan. One little thing I also... Um, it's a surprise and influence, but a Tesla has proper dog mode. <laughs> we do have a dog, we go away. You're gonna go uh, into a restaurant, but you can't take a dog. We can leave him in the car for 45 minutes and the climate's on with a nice display uh, message on the display saying that dog mode's on, don't worry. So it makes a big difference. It's useful, it's great. What I found before with something like the Hyundai or even VWs and uh, Porsches, you can leave the climate running for a bit, but then you leave a little note on the windscreen saying, don't worry, and then you've got to keep an eye that the climate doesn't run out. It's, you know, run out of its 30 minute or 45 minute time and that kind of stuff. So there are some significant advantages to the Tesla. And I did put a reservation down uh, a few weeks ago because it was a 200 pounds reservation. So if it comes to it, I could change my mind, switch to the Hyundai which I've been surely tempted by. A couple of things that annoy me with the Tesla Model 3, the, the handles, the door handles, no lights on the door handles, a bit annoying. Um, and previously with the long range, I didn't find the seats brilliant. They're, I mean, it's nice that they're now ventilated, but there's no massage option. The seat bases are too short for me. I just didn't find the seats especially comfortable. There's much better seats in other cars out there, basically. And the other negative with the Model 3 performance is it does look a bit bland, I think. You know, the Hyundai's on the other end of scale where it looks like it's crashed through the front window of Halfords and picked up all the accessories on the way. But the Model 3 performance does really look much like the long range, the standard range. It doesn't look much different apart from trying to spot the bits in the front bumper. 
And that's why if I get a Model 3 performance, I'll just go for white. One, it's cheaper than all the other colors. And B, I actually think it suits that because you can actually pick apart the slight differences between the performance. Uh, so, the Hyundai, wearing this one up. It looks awesome to drive. Uh, it's got character, it's got noises, it's got gear changes, it's got rev limiters, and pretend stuff. Um, and although a lot of people will kind of balk at the idea of this kind of fakery and pretend stuff, it does add character to it. I found, you know, similar to a Porsche Taycan, really, I think. And as many viewers of our channel know, I'm a bit of a fan of a Porsche Taycan. I've owned plenty and I've kept them for a large part of the last three years. Because normally when I just drive to work, I want the nice, quiet, comfortable ride that they offer, but also it's nice and silent and quiet. But when you do have that nice bit of occasional empty country road or you go to a racetrack, that noise does add drama to it. It is. It is fun. I actually liked having that uh, sort of fake noise to it. Although it's fake, it was, it was good fun. It just added something to it on the odd occasion. And I'm sure the Hyundai has all that, plus then loads more. And we've all seen the videos of its throttle changes and stuff like that, you know, the blips and the rev limiters. I mean, it's got character, isn't it? Uh, so <laughs> it looks good. I've seen, you've seen Misha on YouTube done two consecutive laps and Nervy Ring has held up to that really well. So proper track capability as well. Massive brakes. I've seen the size of the brakes. They're huge and just the stock brakes are fine. You know, amazing car mechanically there. It also, the warranty differences, I guess, is a little factor. Five-year unlimited warranty with a Hyundai, unlimited mileage warranty. Um, however, the eight-year battery warranty is 100,000 miles, and it's a bit more than that with the Tesla. Eight years, 120,000 miles, I think it is. So I think the Hyundai is more engaging, more fun, more character, more to do. You know, you can change the settings. I think they've possibly gone a bit over the top of just how many different versions of uh, settings that are in Hyundai, but at least there's stuff to do, there's things you can play with, and I like that. Uh, on a practical perspective, it's a hatchback. That's more practical than the saloon or the Model 3. I would like a hatchback, actually, it is more practical. I do put stuff in it, uh, so that's good. On track, it's going to be great fun, but so is the Model 3 performance, I expect. Which one's going to be more fun? Well, we're trying to line things up to do a bit of a track battle. I'm sure loads of other people on YouTube are trying to do exactly the same. I think the Model 3 will probably be that little bit quicker, um, but which is actually more fun? Could be the Hyundai. We don't really know quite yet, but we'll see. New Model 3 performance, track mode 3 and all that sort of stuff. Looks like it's going to be really good. But without the noises and the drama, will Tesla bring in noises? Speaker in the back bumper, could that be a little noise thing? I don't know. Maybe they could add that to it. Um, the other thing with the Hyundai, a couple of little things in the spec. One is, um, I don't think it has matrix headlights. It sounds a silly little thing. It's got quite good LED headlights, but matrix headlights are useful. And again, for me, six months of the year, driving home through uh, the new forest, we have wild animals everywhere. You do need really good headlights. I, I always go on about headlights because it makes a big difference, especially with my driving. It's not just through the rush hour traffic in town. It's across roads with loads of animals on. So I like to spot them and not drive into them if I can help it. Uh, again, the downside for the Hyundai is the software. I don't think it's going to be as nice and lovely to use as a Tesla. I don't think it's going to be as efficient. Uh, the charging speed will be good, but it just won't be as easy. Um, and another little thing, it's got just manual seats, not memory seats. You know, first world problems and all that. It was just me driving. Doesn't really matter, does it? But actually, in reality, this is a business car. Other people will be driving it. Maybe, let's see. <laughs> and yeah, it's just gonna be a faff in not having the memory. I mean, our current uh, old Model 3 performance we have outside, uh, we've got all our staff here have got their profiles in, so when we all jump in the car, it all goes to our settings, and it's, that's really handy. It's practically very good, so it doesn't have that, but we'll see. Now, I mentioned our old Model 3 performance out there uh, that we still run in the company. We've done other videos on it, well over 100,000 miles, brilliant, brilliant car for, it's reliability, covering the mileage. We've done very little to maintain that car. Uh, so it's fantastic. What other car does such performance and then can do such mileage and with such little running costs? It's unbelievable. So I've been in a real quandary here. First world problems I have, and I do appreciate that. I'm not saying like a spot brat, hopefully. Uh, it's lovely to be in this position, but the choice between the two. Right, put your comments down below which one would you go for? Now, if you're in the US, as I said, consider that our one is gonna be a lot more expensive, uh, less powerful, 
are much closer in price to the Hyundai Ioniq 5N. Which would you have? Have you got one of these cars? Are you pleased with it? Are you happy with it? So which one have I gone for? And I clicked it in a couple of days. It is the Tesla. Now, it is, makes probably the most practical sense. It is a little bit cheaper, but really the efficiency, the running costs, um, the usability of it, I think it will suit me because I'm a higher mileage driver. I think having the free charge and Tesla charge network makes quite a big difference to me. Uh, I think I'll enjoy the software and look, I've had loads of Tesla Model 3s and they're just great cars. They're well proven now. The reliability has been brilliant. They can do big mileages. So just how will this new Model 3 performance stack up? New seats, I'm really looking forward to seeing how good they are. So. I pick up the new Model 3 Performance in a couple of days, actually. Uh, we're on Tuesday now, and I'll pick it up at the end of the week on Friday. Uh, and even then, I'm straight down to Cornwall that weekend, so probably the end of the first weekend, I have 500 miles now already, to be honest. So see what we think. It's a weird one, because I'm going into it, buying this car, I wouldn't say not excited, but with intrepidation about, is it going to be as good as I hope it's going to be, or am I going to be a bit disappointed and wish I just bought the Ohio Dynic 5N? Well, I guess there's only one way to find out, and that's to go and get it on Friday, see just how good it is, and then maybe we get to try the Hyundai Onyx 5N as well one day. We can always sell one car, get another one. It would be really painful if, and I think it's possible as well, actually, with testers, that they could drop the pricing. Um, you know, I, they, there have been some redundancies in the UK, I think. They're, they're doing offers to get your car by the end of the month because it's the end of the next quarter. Um, will they drop the price in? It wouldn't surprise me, in which case this is a road to losing loads of money. Buying any new car typically is either way, I think, on either of these two. But um, nonetheless, you know, we're going to have some fun in, in life. So I'm going to pick up the uh, Tesla Model 3. Let's see if it lives up to its expectations. So if you want to find out, make sure you're subscribed to our channel because next week you're going to see loads of videos about am I happy or am I disappointed? <laughs> basically but also you know we will do the things like real world range we'll do some draggy timing we'll try and line up some stuff to show you if the performance lives up to its expectation and matches the us cars or not so we'll find out soon make sure you hit subscribe and we'll see you about the model 3 performance very soon take care